Welcome in, everybody. We want to preface for our, some of our cohort members that are here with us today um, that you do not need to be in this session unless you're on our panel today. So you're welcome to try something else. Where This is going to be a big overview of the cohort, but you're also always welcome to stay. We love to see everybody um, that's here. But as we kick off today, our icebreaker question is just describing the best PD experience you've ever had. You can come off mute. You can drop in the chat. Uh, whatever works for you. Yeah, yeah, good talk. Hi, this is Rodolfo Pinto from Portugal. I'm not shy anymore. <laughs> we love it. So, so my best PG. I have two two moments. One and by coincidence, they they happened last year. Uh, to be a code org facilitator to, here in my country and to be a presenter with a workshop in ESTA Philadelphia. It was for me an uh, amazing uh, approach because I get out of my comfort zone. It was not easy to reach them, but here I am. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing and for being here today. You're welcome. We'll hold a little bit more space. I'm happy to share one too. Um, as people are brainstorming, I had the opportunity, I used to teach math and um, for folks that are familiar with the math space, the Desmos um, curriculum, which is now like transferred to a new um, company, but they ran a, a PD cohort and they actually had people out in California at their headquarters. And it was just, that in itself was really amazing. California is beautiful, but um, I just loved their balance of, of giving folks time to really think about how they might use things in their own classrooms. But also there was so much time to connect with other educators across the country, which I feel like I'm still in communication with some of those teachers nowadays. So that's something that I'll I'll always remember. Rick, dropping in Google Innovator. I was gonna say you're in a lot of different groups. Rick, I'm sure you've got a couple of favorites. Love it. Well, with our light icebreaker, feel free to drop something in the chat as you think of it. But we'll go ahead and kick off our session. Um, another quick introduction. We gave some brief ones here at the start, but um, Liz manages curriculum and instruction at Code Savvy. Um, and I do a similar role, but very part-time at Code Savvy, and we are both former educators and super excited to be here. So our session agenda for this session here is, um, this is all going to be about our Code Savvy educator cohort. So we're going to give you a rundown of what it is. Um, we've got a fantastic panel here of um, some current members that are just about wrapped up with their cohort year. We have one more session in May. Um, so we'll get a chance to hear from them slash ask them some questions. We'll talk about briefly how to join the cohort if you're interested or how you can share this with teachers in your community as well. And we'll wrap up. So to get started here, our goals, we're going to really describe the goals and purpose of our educator cohort. We'll explore some of the content that's covered and some of the logistics that we cover during the year. We're going to hear from current and past cohort participants and learn how to apply or spread the word. All right, so to kick us off, a little overview of our cohort. Um, to read here, this is an application-based cohort, so you do apply to uh, be selected to join. Um, we're focused pretty much in Minnesota right now. We're always open to maybe bending the rules if need be, but um, we like to say we're a Minnesota educator based cohort, and we focus on technical and pedagogical knowledge in computer science. Um, again, a little bit further, we've got our purpose as well, is to really empower educators with the knowledge, skills, and resources so that they can bring computer science to their schools or their communities in an equitable way. And our commitment is, it's a school year long commitment. So we start in August and we end in May. So you still get those summers off. Um, just one kind of summer meeting here. But we meet once a month, so monthly, mostly online. We do have some optional in-person events throughout the year, but 
Um, as the pandemic hit, we found it was a little bit easier to make our cohort accessible to folks all across the state as we shifted to mostly online meetings. You can see, if you go back here, Liz, we have a few um, stars that are here in our call today in this picture. Oh my gosh, that was one of our cohort meetings that we had this year. Um, and our content, um, we explore several aspects of computer science. So we show this picture a lot, but computer science, as many of you know, is a huge field with tons of subfields, and we dive into many of them during the cohort year. So we, we deep dive what these subfields are, we provide resources, we provide time to connect with other educators and kind of learn what, what folks are doing in their spaces. But one piece we really aim for is kind of that networking piece as you get to know different folks in this space. And we do want to plug that each of our sessions are differentiated. So we try and kind of break up resources to an elementary space, maybe more that middle space and then the high school space, um, as well as subject area and grade level. So it is pretty expansive. We're going to go a little bit more into the weeds here as we look at what we cover each month. We do want to name that we adjust this year to year um, as, you know, different trends are emerging and so forth. But this is in general kind of what you can expect if you were thinking about joining next year. Um, we have a kickoff in August which um, is really just a time to connect and get to know the folks that are gonna be in our cohort. But we also start defining the CS education space and landscape, and we really hone in on educational equity, which is something that we kind of weave in throughout each of the months. Um, September is an intro to computer science and computational thinking. We also tap into unplugged activities as a very accessible way to bring computer science to your students. October is all about CS integration. So we talk about a framework that Code Savvy has um, used with many teachers, many schools. And we start thinking about how you can integrate CS in content area classrooms and provide support and some work time and some brainstorming um, peers to connect with there. November is all about instructional strategies. So we talk um, often, you don't just wanna give a student a computer and you know, have them just work independently through something, you can be really strategic as a CS teacher to make these experiences really memorable for students and again, equitable. Continuing to move through our year, um, December, we have an app development and design thinking um, workshop where we deep dive just those things there. You come out with um, building an app and we explore several different platforms. January, we've got physical computing and robotics. That was the picture you saw on our, our last slide of current cohort members. Um, this year we explored uh, the micro bits, right? That's what we were doing, the micro bits. Like, oh my goodness, it must be close to noon here. Um, but we we actually, each cohort member got their own micro bit and we got to play around with those a little bit. February, cybersecurity. So defining that, kind of looking at ways that we can bring cybersecurity into our classrooms. And March, data and AI, which as many of you know, AI is a very, very popular space right now. So again, thinking about as teachers, how you can leverage some of those AI tools, but also how you can have some of these really important conversations with students about how to use these tools safely. And here we are, April. Our cohort members attend this summit today as kind of their April meeting. And in May, we have a big celebration, which is actually in person, where we celebrate all of our Code Savvy programs for the year, but we bring cohort members together to, to wrap up together. So long-winded, a lot we cover, you can see there in our year-long um, experience together. But we do wanna plug as well that we, there is an opportunity for three graduate credits through the cohort, it's optional. Some people tap into it, some don't, but um, this is a fantastic opportunity and can be a draw to teachers that you work with or maybe yourself. I also wanna highlight that the Kotsavi Educator Cohort is a CSTA accredited PD, which means we submitted all of our materials and our scope to a committee and they evaluated it for a variety of markers and they um, put it on their website as a PD that they back for hitting certain aspects of computer science professional development. So it's really exciting as well. 
Awesome. Thanks for adding that piece in there, Liz. Um, just a couple other logistics here. Um, who can participate? We truly welcome anybody. We don't, we have a lot of completely new teachers in the space in our cohort this year and in the past. We also have very experienced Minnesota educators and there's room for everybody as we think about um, the cohort as a whole. Um, also any grade level, we really focus on PK through 12. So if you're, you know, college aged or so forth, it might not be the space for you. We kind of focus in this age range. But again, want to emphasize really strongly that you do not need prior experience with computer science to join this cohort. And the cost, um, there is a cost to jo join the cohort. It's $500. We do offer scholarships to join the cohort. Um, so definitely if that's a barrier to you, um, we have a form that uh, we can share and you'll find on our website that you can fill out for a pretty significant scholarship to join. And with that, a lot of talking on my end, but this is the best part of the session is our fantastic panel here. We have four panelists and I'm going to pass it here to Liz to kick us off. Yeah, we have four edu amazing educators that are part of our cohort this year. Um, in a moment, I'll have them introduce themselves, but we have Carol, Lori, Emily, and Jen from a variety of school districts and positions in Minnesota. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and I'll actually pin the four of you so we can see you. And then I'll call someone <laughs> to get us started um, in a moment. So let me pin you spotlight. And so sorry that you all are being spot spotlit for us all, but sorry. we want to see, see you all. All right. I think... Perfect. Our four panelists for today. Um, our first question that we'd like you to answer is to give a brief introduction of who you are and how you got into teaching computer science. I'll leave the floor open for who wants to jump on this question first. I can start. Hi, I'm Emily Lawson Mildy. Um, I was a classroom teacher for about nine years at Bloomington Public Schools. And during the COVID pandemic, I went into teaching online. And through that, our online school um, started to become an immersion school with computer science. So we had a computer science specialist that came into our classrooms for a half hour each day, every other week. Um, and then I had the opportunity to apply for that job, but for an in-person job in my district as a computer science specialist. So that's what I'm doing now. So I'm back in person. I teach kindergarten through fifth grade. I see all my classes once a week for about 40 to 50 minutes, depending on grade level. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. I can go next. I'm Carol Tracy. I'm a library media specialist in the Hopkins School District. I'm in an online school called Virtual EDU. We're actually blended so the kids can come in up to two days a week. Um, my computer science teaching journey is sort of a roller coaster. Um, I'll keep it brief, but I started as a classroom teacher. I was an elementary teacher, taught first grade for several years. I taught third and fourth grade. I ended up becoming a computer teacher, wasn't necessarily designated computer science, but I was a computer teacher, more of the end user um, type of activities when I taught in California. And it seemed to be really ramping up in terms of adopting computer science um, ideas for elementary students. And I was super excited about it. And then we moved to uh, move back to Minnesota and like there was nothing. It was like crickets. And I thought it was so strange. And I thought, wow, the computer science like landscape is changing. No, it was just that it was Minnesota was in this like vacuum of like not pushing computer science. Anyway, I approached, um, I didn't have my Minnesota teaching license at the time. And so I approached a charter school and just told them the importance. I just really like explained the importance of computer science and became a technology teacher for them. Um, did that for a few years. And then I was hired. I tried to find a job as a tech integration specialist in a public school. 
And as I was interviewing, they said, well, we have an opening for a library media specialist. I said, I'm not licensed in that. That's not my background. And they said, well, you're probably halfway there with the training that you've been through. Great. I started doing that. It sort of started to go down a pathway, getting away from the computer stuff. So I kept trying to pull it back in. And when I did, I just saw the kids like brighten up so much. I mean, just the lessons that I would bring into the media center in terms of makerspace things or anything to do with um, physical computing or even talking about how to code things. The kids were just like, wow, just bonkers. Anyway, I remained a media specialist. I'm still a media specialist, but my job has been cut. All of the media specialists in our district are being cut. Um, Jen, who's also here, um, she and I have been rolling out computer science lessons this past year. It's been amazing. And it's just like launched my thinking in terms of being in this cohort. And I know that's questions for later, but um, it's just launched my thinking about computer science, my opportunities, and I'm going to be going in a totally different direction. I just don't know what it is yet. Thank you and for I'll sharing. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Carol. We're excited to see. It's really hard to hear that and get cut, but we're excited to see where you go next um, and to hear more about it. Open it up to Lori or Jen. All right, I'm Lori Burning. I am a, currently a gifted education teacher in the Osceola Area School District. Um, and I took this job back in the fall of 22 after being a classroom teacher, elementary classroom teacher for several years. And so as a tag or gifted ed teacher, I teach language arts, math, and this nebulous thing called talent development. And I went to Katie Dwyer because um, Zanewood was one of my two schools that I was working at. And I'm like, Katie, what do I teach for talent development? What, what do your students need? And she's like, they need computer science, like robotics or coding. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've never done this before. So um, I jumped in with both feet and started teaching robotics to third, fourth, and fifth grade. Also taught some coding with micro bits. And that then I joined the cohort because I wanted to learn how to be more effective in teaching that. So thank you, Lori. All right. Um, so my name is Jen Wallace, and I um I got into computer science uh probably about eight, nine years ago. I um um, I started in education as a high school English teacher, and then in the, in the early 2000s, I went to school to be a library media specialist. I was in Michigan at the time, and I was reminded of how I um, had the opportunity to learn HTML, and I really think that that was my first exposure to like to a programming kind of language, a hyper, you know, hypertext markup language. But like I was really interested in that creating with technology. So I was away from education for a while and then I came back. And um, so I did some code.org workshops and I did as many like conferences and workshops as I could find. And um and I was drawn to the ones with computer um, science and learning more. And um, in the job that I uh, was hired to do, I was a media specialist and technology integrationist. And my principal really wanted us to um, get started with robotics. And so I was tasked with um, creating a program for us to explore and, and use to, um, robotics. So I was all about like um, uh, just learning as much as I could about computer science. And and I um and I've been working in elementary um, school, so that's where my focus has been up to this point. But I want to do more, so yeah. Fantastic! Thank you all for sharing. Some of you answered this question in your introduction, but our next question is: Why did you decide to join the Code Savvy Educator cohort? Um, I just want to preface: other than that first question, I'm not going to make you all answer the question. So feel free to jump in add on to each other's responses as we move forward in the panel. 
You know, maybe I'll start. Um, so I've done the cohort twice. I did it back in, I think it was 2018, 19. And like I just said, um, I would go to these, to different conferences. I think I would go to our, our um, media conference item. I went to like a um, technology integrationist and um, ties back when it was called ties and Sourcewell. And um, I would see the same people talk about coding and computational thinking. And then they would talk about the cohort. And I remember Angie Kultoff was a person who did the co.org sessions. I don't know if she ever did the cohort, but, and then I, I got, I, I just started to see those people and hear them do it. And I was like, okay, I, I need to, if I want to invest, I want to do that, this cohort that, and connect with other people too, because nobody else in my school was really talking about it. They, all of the other teachers and even media specialists were tasked with other things. And it was like, I wanted to connect with other people who were doing this work. That's so true, Jen. I know that oftentimes, at least like in the last couple of years, I've been a part of the cohort. Most of the educators are the one or two champions in their school or district. That's an awesome point. I had the exact same experience. Um, and this was before I knew Jen, but I was also attending those TIES conferences. And I would find, well, the TIES conference was focused on technology, but at the media conferences that we would go to, I would find myself gravitating toward the computer science-y type sessions. And then at the TIES conference, I heard somebody talking about the cohort as well. And I thought, oh, this would be good because I did feel so isolated and trying to define what a library media specialist does and what they're supposed to do. And why am I bringing in this thing and that thing? It just felt like this made like, this just brought it home for me. And I thought this would be a great way to collaborate with other teachers in an ongoing fashion rather than like a once a year conference, just going and then, oh, I've got a year to like look through that material. I love the nature of getting together throughout the entire year. And if I look back on, I, this is my second year doing it as well. If I look back on what I was doing before I started this cohort, and what I'm doing now, not only just in my classes, but like my whole career path, it has been a complete turnaround. And I feel like I'm at the end of my career. I mean, I've been in teaching for over 20 years, um, but I feel like this has been the biggest shift for me. And thankfully, because like I'm out of a job and this is the thing that is going to save me. So that's how I got to it and why it has been like so valuable for me. Thank you for sharing that, Carol. I joined for a few reasons. So this is my first year uh, teaching computer science K through five, um, not being the classroom teacher co-teaching with the computer science teacher. So I really wanted to find a group that um, I could kind of lean on or get ideas from. I also had two uh, staff members and mentors of mine uh, highly refer this program that they've went through before and got a lot out of it. And I'm also really lucky that our school district works with Code Savvy um, and with Liz a lot on the curriculum that we're developing. So a few reasons, and it's been really great. Thank you. I know, I think I know exactly who you're referring to too, Emily. Great people. Go ahead, Lori. So um, Melissa Pedersen and I, we work at Weaver Lake Elementary. It's a STEM school and we had um, decided to join the cohort together to try to collaborate more on how could we bring computer science um, more effectively into our STEM school. And for me, it was also to boost my confidence as a computer science teacher, you know, that part of my role, since I felt like I was such a novice. You all have done such amazing things, and it's so cool to hear your passion for continuing to grow in these spaces. So with that, tell us about something you learned in the cohort that you brought back to your classroom or school this past year. Part of my job as a computer science specialist at my building is to also be a coach and mentor for the rest of the staff with computer science. So a big thing is I was 
able to steal a lot of things from Liz and Ashley to be able to present computer science ideas and concepts to my staff. And so I think overall, not only has it made me a better teacher to my students, but I do think it's maybe a better coach and mentor to my staff as well. We love that you steal our resources and use them. That is the whole point. Go ahead, Jen. Um, well, I was just going to say that um, through, through, co through this experience, I have gotten so many resources. I, I just have like so many different resources that I can use, that I could use later. And I, I see my students for a short amount of time and I, um, and so I'm trying to like get them, figure out, um, how I can expose them to this. So for this year, I've uh, returned a lot to um, code.org resources. You know, it's kind of that one I feel like that's uh, like that's where a lot of people start, but I just feel like it's such an accessible place to start to, um, especially when I have a limited amount of time. So I got my, I get all my classes like from first grade through fifth grade started with a code studio course that we can work on and um, then they can um, continue to work on. Um, I forget what the original question was. Um, oh, how I'm bringing it back to my school. I think also um, Carol and I got pulled into an initiative, a fundraiser for our school where we were um, um, promoting the importance of computer science. And um, I, I feel like as I've learned more, um, I'm just pulled into the, um, you know, to the the equity piece of computer science and how I, I look at how it is dominated, a field dominated by white males and how we as educators need to expose all of our children to this and the kids who don't get to do the ex after school clubs and whose parents aren't, you know, moving them forward, they have the right to do computer science too. And so that really has been driving my work. And I feel like that is where um, I'm bringing that connection to my school district. And that's something, I think that equity piece is something my school feels strongly about. And I think it's the reason why we're moving forward with computer science to some extent. And Code Savvy in this cohort is like, like this is where I am getting the, the content and the support for that work. So it's really good. Oh, thank you, Jen. So happy to hear your experience and how you've been bringing that back to your district and your school specifically. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead, Carol. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, Emily, yes, borrowing, not stealing. They're just giving it to us. It's so amazing. You know, I had a day, the example I was going to use, I have a specific example of something that I brought back to my class because we recently were talking about cybersecurity in the cohort. And admittedly, I didn't really know what, I mean, I know what cybersecurity is as a thing that's out there that happens to protect me and students and my bank accounts and all those things, but I didn't really know how it worked. And um, I just, I love this cohort because I feel like you can come in at any level, like going, what, like, what is cybersecurity? I have no idea. And now I'm teaching it and it's just so amazing. And so we had a session where we watched like an intro video about, it, it just was so good. It was like a one or two minute video that you guys shared. And like Emily, I just like pulled some of those slides and I'm like, all right, I'm going to start with 11th and 12th graders. Cause I feel like, you know, they could grasp onto this knowledge like I have. And so I shared it with them. They thought it was so cool. Then I started down the cybersecurity rabbit hole and I found other videos that were about, um, well, you guys had shared some with us, cybersecurity careers. And then I found others on YouTube. The kids got super excited about it. And then I had some assignments where we were doing the ciphers. And in fact, one of you, I can't remember, I had to email somebody. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just gave this assignment and I don't know the answers. I can't remember the answers to the ciphers. And one of you got back to me just like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. The kids loved that. And so then I actually like brought it down to ninth and 10th grade. Then I was like, 
going to do it with sixth through eighth grade. I got it all the way down through third through fifth grade. Now, they were not doing the super complicated ciphers, but I did give it to them. I said, you, you can do this if you'd like. Like, we can do some of them together. You can do it on your own. But with the videos that you shared and the way that you walked me through it, um, from not understanding what cybersecurity really was on that, like, creator side of things or protector side of things, I have been able to roll it out to eight-year-olds. And I just think that's so amazing. And then with K through two, I'm using the terms cybersecurity, but talking about it more in the sense of internet safety. And uh, so that's been super valuable. And then also talking to third through fifth graders about it, one of the examples I used was how to protect bank accounts. And then a student said, what is a bank account? And But they still were able to grasp onto the ideas and then my example of what is a bank account was like, as a teacher, I get a paycheck and it goes into my bank account. And then one of the kids said, but I thought teachers didn't make any money. So it was kind of comical, like, well, we make a little bit. So it's just been just all of the things that you guys have shared, I've been able to bring back. But that is the biggest example of something that I had no idea how to comprehend and now I'm explaining it to eight-year-olds and they get it. That's fantastic, Carol. You really ran with that cybersecurity stuff. That's awesome. So excited to hear it. Um, I'll leave it open for a little bit longer if anyone else wants to chime in. For me, it was borrowing uh, so many instructional strategies as I was creating um, robotics units to teach to my third and fourth graders. So one of I think one of their favorites was when we started out at the beginning teaching the word algorithm, what does that mean? And mm -hmm. having them give me or give me the directions on how to make a jelly sandwich and how then using a couple people's directions, trying to make a jelly sandwich and, and getting them to realize an algorithm, just like for making a jelly sandwich, you have to be very specific about your directions. And when you are coding a robot to do something, you also need to be super specific on what you want it to do. Otherwise, it's, it's not going to work or it's not going to do what you want. That's fantastic. Uh, unplugged activity and a semantic wave where you're breaking it down in a relatable sense and then applying it directly. Jen, Lori, Lori, did you actually bring the bread and the jelly and did you follow their directions? Oh, that's so cool. I love it. Oh. Lori, you're muted. I did. So like they would bring the jar of gel or they'd say, you know, take the jelly and put it on the bread, but they didn't tell you to open the jar and take the knife in. So I would put, here's the bread, here's the jar of jelly and put the other one on top. And they were just laughing. And it's like, <laughs> this is why it's so important to be very specific. Cool. I love it. All right. Our next question is how did the part, oh my goodness, how did participating in the cohort impact you and why should others consider joining the cohort? Well, right off the bat, it is going to save my career. So, but that's more of like a personal uh, gain from being here. Um, it's just really changed the way that I teach, the way that I look at equity, um, the way that I see the shortcomings of education, computer science education in Minnesota, it's connected me to so many other like groups and people. Um, Jen and I got connected through this group with Hannah from code.org and we were able to testify at the state on a bill having to do with computer science. We've gotten connected to, um, well, Andrea Vasquez, I think we were connected to before, but she was our connector to this. So just making all those connections. And in the beginning, I felt like my head was spinning, but I also felt comfortable like saying my head is spinning. And now I feel like it's sort of all like, it's these little pieces of a quilt and I'm not a quilter. I don't know why I picked this analogy, but it's all these little patches of a quilt. All of a sudden it's like all coming together for me right now. And I'm like, oh, 
it's too bad I'm at like the end of my career, but maybe I'll teach for longer than I was planning on because I'm just so super excited about it and just excited to engage in this next journey of teaching. Thank you for sharing, Carol. Carol, I agree. The whole thing about equitable access or opportunities for students, and I, I had no idea when I started this, and and um, it's really raised my level of awareness and my focus on trying to provide as many kids as possible with those experiences so they, they can get excited about computer science and try different things. I feel like I might be repeating myself, but just in general, like the connections made um, across the state and sharing what we've done, the resources that we've gotten from Liz and Ashley, um, the ideas that have sprung off of all of those things on what I can do in my classroom next year, what I can do with my staff coming up. So um, if you're thinking about it, I would suggest doing it for sure. You know, and, and for me, it's it has really given me a focus in education. As a media specialist, I explore a lot of different topics, but I I really um, I, I just have found a passion in computer science, and I um, have decided that with my work with it, I just want to do more. And I've done a lot with elementary, and I I want to be a learner and learn more about um, about like more advanced computer science too, and how I can apply it and um, and I think um, the focus really is that that career path for for students for me. Like I'm not a math teacher. Now I, I should have said before my dad's an engineer, and my my sister is a calculus uh, tutor, and my brother did go to school for math education. So I come from this math family. So I've always, but I've always been more, you know. Um, literature or um, humanities focus. So I kind of am like, oh, computer science fits right in with who we all are. But um, but no, I, I do feel like um, the, I mean, technology is just around us so much. It's part of every part of our life, whether we like it or not. And I just think we, um, our kids deserve to understand how that technology works so they can understand it in our lives and perhaps do it, use it in their lives. Right. Um, and that's where I'm, I find my interest in wanting to do more with it. You know, to tag on to that, I could, our students are so often consumers of technology, but giving them opportunities to be producers of technology and computer science, I think is really helpful and gives it opens or expands their opportunities for the future what can we do i don't just have to be a gamer or whatever i can do other things with it and to tag on that Lori, i think too if all of the students are learning it it also will eliminate some of the biases that exist in ai and other areas of computer science so there's so many ripple effects to having all of our students exposed to it, not just through clubs or elective courses, but everybody. Awesome. That's my last question that I had prepared, but I do want to open the floor to any of our participants, cohort members, the four of you. Um, that if you want to ask any more questions about the cohort, their experiences, uh, feel free to unmute or drop in the chat. You know, as we're waiting for me some questions, I, I wanted to make a point that um, <laughs> um, I did the cohort twice. The first time was in 2018. I, I think I have that date right. And um, it was much more of an intensive um, experience. It was good. It was really good. But we met uh, in person monthly. And at the start, I think we met twice and long day. Like, I think we had some full day sessions. And I, I um found so many more resources. What I found the second time around doing it is that you all have made it really accessible. You're thinking about like what 
you know, the, the load that all of us teachers have and like, it is so doable. And then there's so many good resources. And then the other connection I wanted to mention or, or, or a point I wanted to mention is that, that like there were new things to learn too. Like when I did this a few years ago, cybersecurity wasn't a big deal and now AI is happening. And so it just, it, um, and I want to dive in. I haven't even, um, I want to go into those resources a lot more, but my point is that um, that in this area, I think there's going to be um, a lot of new learning to do all of the time. And uh, so doing this um, for a second time was really valuable. I totally agree, Jen. I too was going to join the cohort pre-pandemic and I didn't because I took a new job and I thought, oh, I think it's, I think it's going to be too overwhelming for me. I'm going to pause this for a little while and I didn't do it. I'm kind of glad just because I don't think I could have done both at the same time based on how the cohort was structured before, but I love the structure of it now, but I'm also sad because I don't want to leave. Like I'm going to have to like get a disguise and change my name or something because I don't want to leave this cohort. So I'm almost hoping that like something else comes out of the cohort. Like, can we be trained the trainers back in our schools? Like Emily was talking about, you've used it as a PD, um, as a way to bring PD back to your school. I have not done that. And so now I'm like, oh, that would be a great way to like refocus the things that I do, but you got to let me back in. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like there should be something where we can keep going. That's such a, we love hearing that. And um, definitely are looking for ways to expand because we know it's like, we do all this and then it's kind of like, okay, now what? Like, how are we going to continue and continue growing? So know that that's been something that Ashley and I have been thinking about, like, how might we continue stuff like this um, further, especially for our cohort members, because we don't want the communication, the collaboration to drop off after this year. I do want to highlight that Christy also in the chat said that she agrees with all that is said. Um, as she started teaching CS this year, this group was a saving grace. Um, I love when teach when you're teaching CS, you get to see those students who don't always shine with reading and math. It gives them hope that they can do and be something even if reading isn't their strength. And then Rick asked a great question. Um, would you recommend this cohort for teachers that teach subjects other than computer and tech and stuff? Yes. Rick, I would actually say like the teachers that are maybe pushing back the most on computer science and tech stuff would be the people who would benefit from this cohort the most because they're able to see all of it in a different lens. And then I just wanted to add to what Jen and Carol were saying of just about like the structure of the cohort too. Um, I have a two-year-old and a one-year-old. So being able to be online and having a month to get assignments done, just the flexibility that it offered for me and everything going on in my life was really helpful, um, but still able to learn and take a lot from it. Um, I would point out too, um, I just forgot. And um, when I did it the first time I did do the the um, the college credit and that was a great option and you're already doing the work. And so um, it works, you know, it's helpful for those lane changes or if, um, um, perhaps, and, um, that was, that was great too. And, um, would you recommend it to other people? Yes. Um, because like at the elementary K-5, I think I, I didn't attend the, the state session, but from what I heard too, um, the standards are really integrated into our subject areas. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that really, um, for those people who, are interested in doing a little more. It's really a, or learning more. It's, it will bring your feet in and then help you launch and do a lot more with computer science connected to like math or science or things like that. Um, we also have had a relationship with um, the Science Museum of Minnesota and I know they, they're they offering some free things and different things too. So um Good to make those connections and collaborations and um, and offer the next thing and build on what you're doing. So it is really fun work. I agree, Carol. 
Awesome. I am sad that I have to wrap us up because I could listen to you all talk about it and then love the answers and the questions that we've been able to dive in together. Um, but we do have to wrap up as the day is almost over. So I'm going to unspotlight you all. Thank you um, to the four of you for being willing to share your experiences as well as your participation in the cohort this past year. Um, Ashley and I have enjoyed working with all of our cohort members and we learn as much from you as you do from us. Uh, so we're really thankful for this opportunity. So I'm gonna get back to sharing my screen. And end out this last session. Um, I know that a lot of the individuals that are in this meeting are current cohort members, um, but I do want to highlight the process for signing up for the cohort. Um, I will share this slide deck with you all in a minute, but step one is viewing that schedule, making sure that you can attend the meetings as they're really important to your participation in the cohort. Step two is filling out a short application um, that really just provides us with some insights about what you're doing, where you work, and what your goals are with computer science. And finally, the last piece is getting that administrator support form from your, in, your administrator. That just basically lets them know that you're doing this and that you're a part of this work so that they're able to support you. Like Ashley said earlier on, um, we do not want cost to ever be a barrier for participation in Code Savvy programs. So there is a scholarship application that is available um, as well. I want to highlight that this slide deck will be available after the summit and you'll have access to these pieces. Um, I do challenge those of you that have been in the cohort to really try and engage educators in your community like the ones that you mentioned that would really benefit from an opportunity like this, especially if they're a little apprehensive about bringing computer science to their classrooms. I have been plugging this all day, but I'm gonna plug it one last time. program that we're going to be offering this summer. Uh, it is going to be expansive and really develop your skills in teaching with Scratch from beginner all the way up to advanced. And um, we have an educator and student event on May 19th at Highland Hills in, oh my gosh, Bloomington. Um, that'll be really fun and it's an opportunity to celebrate the educators and the students that have been a part of our programs. And to end it off, I want to thank you all for coming and your participation and to connect with Ashley and I. Um, our cohort members do a really good job of reaching out when they have questions, but this is open up to anyone. If there's a resource or if you want to learn more about different opportunities, we want to be there as a networking tool and a connection in this space. 